E W S. The Overnight Underground Podcast. And some things to know today. Trump will order flags to fly at half-mast over COVID-19. Caesars Palace and the Flamingo will be the first casinos to open in Vegas. China jockeys for total Hong Kong makeover. A uh, takeover. A Pakistani airliner has crashed, killing at least 100. And the man who filmed Amud Arbery... <laughs> and the man who filmed the Amud Arbery shooting is arrested for murder. It's the Overnight Underground News. And I'm John Ford. The president and the Michigan attorney general are trading verbal blows over Trump's decision not to wear a mask. Michigan attorney general Dana Nessel played the Trump card and made numerous scathing Twitter posts overnight, calling Trump a, quote, petulant child. To say that you behave childishly is an insult to children everywhere. What's it all about? Trump not wearing a face mask at a Ford assembly plant. That there not be any visits to the plants anyway, but we're we're waving that. There'd be six foot distancing between people in the plant, that they wear a facial covering of some type. So we are just asking that President Trump comply with the law of our state. Michigan Attorney General Dana Nessel on CNN. Trump's response? He fired back in a tweet calling Nessel a, quote, do-nothing AG of the great state of Michigan. Honestly, I think they both sound like petulant children. Such is the state of the American political stage in the year of our Lord, 2020. Amen! What do you say? Let's slide this little item in, the soundbite of the day. It's none other than your president and mine, Bullwinkle J. Trump, responding to a reporter's question about his controversial hydrochloroquine treatment to ward off COVID-19. The president said this. And I tested very positively in a in another sense. So this morning, yeah, I tested positively toward negative, right? So, no, I tested uh, perfectly this morning, meaning, meaning I tested... Negative. I believe that's a definite maybe. I speak English very good now. Could it be that during the test, the nose swab rammed a little too far up the presidential snoot and caused more brain damage to the old executive noodle? Yes. Just saying. But wait, we've also got another contender for the soundbite of the day, and it's from none other than presumptive Democratic presidential nominee, Joe Biden. Biden told African-American radio host Charlemagne the God on a Friday morning interview that if someone is having difficulty choosing between him and Trump, then they, quote, ain't black. If you have a problem figuring out whether you're for me or Trump, then you ain't black. You know, I think that this one is better than the one from the other day. We have this notion that somehow if you're poor, you cannot do it. Poor kids are just as bright and just as talented as white kids. Yeah, it's a total race to the bottom of these two. Honestly, I think. We're boned. And Friday, President Trump played to his religious electorate and announced that his administration will deem houses of worship as essential businesses. Identifying houses of worship, churches, synagogue, and mosques as essential places that provide essential services. The president went on to call out some governors who have deemed liquor stores and abortion clinics as essential. <laughs> but still won't allow churches to reopen. Some governors have deemed liquor stores and abortion clinics as essential, but have left out churches and other houses of worship. It's not right. So I'm correcting this injustice and calling houses of worship essential. Hey, what about AA meetings at the church? Uh, Is that okay? My name is Barney, and I'm an alcoholic. Uh. All-around rich guy Mark Cuban said pretty much the same thing to Sean Hannity the other night, that both Trump and Biden are bad choices for leader of the free world. Both sides scare me. I'm not, I'm not going to lie, Sean. Joe Biden scares me in some areas, and President Trump scares me in more areas. What's that all about? Well, Cuban told CNBC that he has not ruled out an independent run for the White House in 2020. He went on to say that he believes both Biden and Trump are, quote, technologically illiterate. Whatever that means. Unfortunately, these days, technologically literate means knowing how to like on fake book and retweet a cat video. Yeah. One thing we do know for sure is that Trump knows how to be the twatter in chief. And Biden? Well, poor Uncle Joe is still moving kind of slow with his functions. 
We hear that Biden still has trouble finding the any key and totally believes the slide out CD tray is indeed a cup holder. Dumb as dirt. Just how far will some journalists go to double down just to make sure Trump doesn't get reelected in November? Over at The Nation, journo Katha Polit, Katha Polit, I, I have no idea, uh-huh. seems to have the answer. Polit, Polit, <laughs> remarked in an article discussing the Joe Biden and Tara Reid scandal that she would vote for good old Uncle Joe, even if he, quote, boiled babies and ate them. You like children. I do if they're properly cooked. Maybe in next month's issue, the nation will print a good recipe. First, they infect the planet with their bat munching pandemic. Now, the Chinese are set to use coronavirus to end Hong Kong as we know it. Remember the good old days of the pro-democracy demonstrators in Hong Kong? The Chinese want everyone to forget they ever happened and have crammed their new draconian security law down the throat of the Hong Kong electorate. This new law bypasses Hong Kong's legislature by instituting a rarely used constitutional backdoor. Come on, squeal! Squeal! That is not actual audio from the Chinese oligarchy giving the good citizens of Hong Kong a good reaming, but it might as well be. I just want to say to the international community that this is the end of Hong Kong. This is the end of one country, two system. Make no mistake about it, that Beijing, the central people's government, has completely breach its promise to the Hong Kong people, a promise that was enshrined in the Sino-British Joint Declaration and the Basic Law. Opposition lawmaker Dennis Kwok in Hong Kong. Look for an end of the open internet, Chinese secret police setting up shop in Hong Kong, and anti-sedition laws to jail anyone who criticizes their Beijing overlords. Outside of a classical liberal democratic miracle, it looks like the party's over in Hong Kong. Are you saying these people are commies? No, I think I'm saying they're totalitarian, kleptocratic bastards. The Georgia man who filmed the shooting and death of Ahmoud Arbery has himself been arrested on murder charges. USA Today reports William Roddy Bryan was charged with felony murder and criminal attempt to commit false imprisonment in Arbery's shooting death. Bryan had claimed he was only being a good Samaritan when he filmed Arbery's death. But a newly released expanded version of the video apparently shows Brian also chasing Arbery. Brian then allegedly filmed while Arbery was shot dead. And not all these people are lovely, nice people, believe me. Things are a little less fabulous in San Francisco today. The city's oldest gay bar, The Stud, is calling it a day. Oh, be nice! The bar owner told KRON-TV that due to declining revenues caused by coronavirus, they've decided to permanently close down their location in the Soma neighborhood. Too bad the place had to go down. I hear that before the pandemic, it was usually packed. That's a little joker. N-E-W-S. A mostly correct and occasionally incomplete transcript and links to reference sources and articles of this Overnight Underground can be found at OvernightUnderground.com.